Hi, I'm Miss Alessi, and today I had lunch with a artist. He's a photojournalist, been a teacher for 17 years, now an art teacher. My name is Todd Hugus. I'm the new art teacher at Smalley Elementary School. So I'll be teaching students from kindergarten through fifth grade. Before this, I've had many jobs. Chief Operating Officer at a computer games company. I was also a photojournalist uh, for a lot of newspapers, both in Connecticut and New Hampshire. I've been teaching for 17 years. This will be my 18th year. Before that, I was teaching fourth, fifth, and sixth grades. And I was also the STEAM teacher for three years. Well, if you've watched uh, Ted Lasso, you know that he says football is life all the time. In my opinion, art is pretty much life. You'll find it every single place that you go. As an artist or as a person who practices art, sometimes it's really important to my life, and then and sometimes it's not as important. For me, art has mostly taken the form of photography. Teaching is an art. You're going to have to create whether you like it or not. It's going to come out in some way. Uh, most of my life, my art has taken the form of photography. And mostly uh, it's been photojournalism, which means I've documented things, which means taking pictures without setting up the pictures. I took pictures that ended up in the newspaper all over the world. That was what I liked most about photography, but I also was a big fan of night photography. So I would go out in the middle of the night and take pictures of light and shadows and star trails, etc. But I've also been a wedding photographer, and so photography has been how I did most of my art. Teaching is also an art. If you don't make something that kids are going to enjoy, they're going to be bored out of their minds. And so as a teacher, you have to be very creative in how you deliver your lesson. You also have to believe in your art. If you don't believe in your art, in your lesson and in your photography, then what are you really doing? Uh, when I started photography, I would use cameras that used film. Film is something that most people younger than 30 probably don't really understand because you had to actually load the film in the back of the camera, expose the film, then you would have to take that film out when you're done after you've rolled it up, developed it in a dark room because if any light got exposed to it, it would ruin the film completely. So it was a much longer process than what you do now, especially with these things. The cameras themselves cost a lot of money like these phones to cost a lot of money. You can take a million pictures, then it's just a matter of costing you time because it's a lot of time to edit and find the right picture exactly. So cameras, dark rooms, now it's computers, photo manipulation software like Adobe Photoshop or something like that. As with teaching, teaching is also an art, like I said. Your most important tool in teaching is your mind. As a teacher, you have to be creative. So. If at some times you have to act like a crazy person, if you have to speak in a funny voice, then you do that. You're not going to just load kids up with worksheets because they will be bored out of their mind. So teaching is an art in that you have to think about it from another's point of view. How are they gonna view your art? Well, as with photography, all kinds of art um, uses materials with photography that's really important because a lot of the chemicals had to be disposed of the right way. If not, you were harming the environment and the environment is obviously super important. I would also uh, have to take care of my camera. You have to take care of your tools. If you don't take care of your camera, then that could be a problem when you take these pictures. You might have this one little problem in your, every single one of your pictures, which you then have to take out picture by picture. If you make that one mistake, you're paying for it for a long time. If you're not taking care of your environment, if you're not taking care of your tools, you will pay the price in the long run, or you will have to rebuy all those tools. Uh, as a photojournalist working for a newspaper, you had to have things done in time. You had a deadline. You had to be done by a certain time of the day, place it in uh, the layout for the newspaper and get it printed for it to go out in the mornings. Could not break those deadlines. There were no options with that. I was, like I said before, I was also a wedding photographer. I took my job very seriously. Also, I would take photographs of her as her and her bridesmaids were getting ready the whole time. I would then travel to the church 
and I'd have to have lights set up, take care of all the pictures, and if you missed that kiss picture, you were in big, big trouble. From there, we would take the bride and the groom, we would set up portraits, which I didn't like doing as much. I like documentary photography, which is capturing moments. And then after that, we would take pictures of the reception. So all of this would take probably from, let's say, 9.30 in the morning till 11.30 at night. So it was a long day. After that, I would have to then upload them all into my computer. So I would do this over the next two, three days. I would have somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 4,000 pictures, and I'd have to edit them down to about 800 pictures, which means taking the time to look at every individual picture to choose the best one. And you have to be uh, very good at your job to do all of that. After that, I would have them printed. I would put all the pictures in albums, and then I would deliver them and spend the time talking with the couple and hope they were happy. Uh, I typically do not sell my artwork, but because I worked for newspapers, my artwork, if it was really good, would help sell newspapers. And the people who owned the newspapers liked it when you sold newspapers. Uh, on the other hand, the wedding photography, that you got paid in advance or for half, and then they paid the other half when you were done. And you could make two, three, four, five thousand dollars doing that. And some of the very professional wedding photographers could make up to ten, fifteen thousand dollars for doing all that. I was I was shot in more of a photojournalism style, which means I documented everything I didn't set up pictures. Uh, with photography, you could get frustrated. Oftentimes in newspaper photography, you could get frustrated because some of the assignments were super boring. Go take a picture of this building. Well, wow. Then saying, okay, it's a challenge to yourself. How can I take this? So you're creating some sort of frame for that building. You were taking a portrait of somebody. That person might not be the most exciting person or they might be sitting behind your desk. Okay, I'm gonna complete this boring assignment right now. Sometimes it is what it is. Also, you're gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. With photography and with any other kind of artwork, you can do what is called cropping which means you can say, oh, I hate that top part of that image and the side part of that image. Well, cut them out. But somebody else might like it or look at it and say, hey, that looks kind of cool. So maybe you need to ask other people or talk to other people about whether that truly was a mistake. Don't just throw away your work. You put a lot of effort into that work. And I worked for newspapers. With newspapers, you're getting paid to produce photographs. So you have to do it within a deadline. So there's no choices. You just have to do it. It's like Nike, just do it. With wedding photography, you got paid half up front, and that person is trusting you for a very important part of their life and document it. So if you don't do that, you shouldn't be doing photography at that point. My artwork now, I sometimes use watercolor now, I use paint now. I just like it because I'm learning new things. I don't have to be the best at it. So I just want to try new things, try them all. With newspaper photography, I talked to the reporters a lot and I wanted to find more information about the story because I didn't want to take a run in the mill picture. I wanted to actually take something that told a story or told a narrative. You really wanted to let the reader know about this person or about this situation, about this event. And if you didn't do a good job with it, they wouldn't really understand the photography. With weddings, you had to tell the story of that couple's day. What did it look like from start to finish? There's going to be people who absolutely love it. All of their family members, their friends, people that know them. They're, they'll love those pictures forever. So all of those things are really important. All of those things require planning. And a lot of times nowadays, um, your planning can be in the form of viewing TikToks, viewing YouTube, because there's a million artists out there that you can go look at. Now, you don't have to do the same thing as them, but they may inspire you to come up with new ideas. So research nowadays is a lot easier than it used to be in the, in the past. So I love watching TikTok and YouTube, especially artist videos. Uh, refining photography is different from other artworks, especially digital and quite frankly, any kind of digital artwork. You can change things over and over and it's very easy to make changes. Crop out something that you don't like. You can use the clone tool and eliminate something. It's a strange new world with this digital photography, etc. But most often I do not make those changes. However, I will 
look at my image, maybe change the contrast because it makes the image better. It just means I'm changing the tonal values of those. The photojournalism community is a very small community and we used to talk to each other a lot. And if you're working for a newspaper, you would usually have two, three, four, five, up to 18 photographers that worked for that newspaper. And we would have discussions and we would actually bounce ideas off each other. We would talk to each other about how you cropped the image. Which image out of a series of image was the best? So sometimes you didn't agree with the other photographers, but you have to have an open mind. You're making the image, but other people are viewing that image because art is for everyone. If you're putting it out there, then you should listen to others and have others around you critique you or give you advice. And don't look at things with a closed mind. Look at everything with an open mind. I'm old, so I don't remember a lot about my art teachers from way back in elementary school and middle school. However, I do rem remember some of the art projects like creating a clay head, which uh, I used as a paperweight for a lot of years. So sometimes you're going to love projects, sometimes you're not. Most of my high school art teachers, I honestly don't remember for some reason. And I had uh, a couple of art teachers and I remember their names, Gypsy Ray and Norman Locks. Gypsy Ray was at Cabrillo College in California and Aptos, California, and Norman Locks is at the University of California at Santa Cruz, go slugs. And he was my photography teacher for many classes there at UCSC. And they were always super supportive and they forced you to discuss and have reasons for your artwork. So why did you take a picture like that? What were you trying to say with that? So a lot of those people that force you into an uncomfortable position and make you talk about your, your art are the ones sometimes that you're going to remember. And the ones who are always your cheerleader, they're the ones you're gonna remember as well. And hopefully I'll be that. I think the most important thing that you can tell any elementary or middle school artist is to just try everything. How do you know if you like something if you haven't tried it? I had no idea that I liked watercolor. But once I decided to become the art teacher, I said, oh my God, I need to actually try some things that I've never tried. I never tried watercolor and I was really never a painter. So I love photography, I love watercolor, and who knows what else I like at this point. So everything that I'm gonna be trying this year, um, I'm gonna be trying with you. And so I say, just say yes to everything and just try it. Who knows what you'll like and what you won't. If you have any kind of artistic gene in you, you just have to create. Now, creation can come in any form at all. You could be doing a play, tell jokes, you could take pictures, you could paint, you can do sculpture, you can make collages, you can do a scrapbook. Um, there are a million different ways to do art. And if you're on TikTok or YouTube and you're looking at all those videos, guess what? Every single one of those people is doing art. Some of them are trying to sell you something, that's art. Some of them are trying to just put out something interesting in the world. And if you're doing art and you're putting something interesting out there that other people, that make other people feel an emotion, then you are an artist.